So eventually, at some point, we're going to have to use some sort of API to get some data to our application. And I'm probably going to be using this onsplash.com API because I want something with pictures in it as well, even though I didn't make up my mind on this yet. But before we even get to APIs and getting data from APIs, we really need to kind of revisit a topic of how JSX handles arrays. So if we go back to our code, right now we've made some routes and we have this home page, we have this about page. I'm just gonna use this home page for this, that's fine. So let me just close all this other stuff, go to home component, which basically just renders this. So let's talk about how exactly we can render a list of elements to our page. So you can either return one thing, like what we do right now, or we could return an array. And then within this array, we can have multiple JSX returns. So I'm just going to push this down a little bit and then add a comma. And then I could just, for example, repeat this entire section down here. So now I have an array of two things. So if I save this and go back and take a look, you'll basically see that I got two of those rendered. And if I inspect this, you'll see how I got this first section. And then I have this second section returned right below the first section. And if I add another thing to this array, that's just going to return it here again. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly the same copy of the same thing. It could literally be just anything else in your array. So if I just go here, add a comma, and in this array, I add, say, an h1. Or let's make this one h2. So now I have one comma two comma three if we go back and take a look see we got this section this section so it's better probably to look at this html section section and then finally that h2 renders right below so now that we know this let's actually go back and get rid of this array that i just did pretty much where we started but now if we want it, we could go within this return and within that return, we can also return another array. And for that, we need some sort of, again, JavaScript code within this return because now we're in this JSX. So I can just create this brackets, which makes JavaScript brackets. And now I can go within this brackets and again, create an array. And within this array, I can return a few different things. So now I have this array of two things here and we go back and take a look. See, we got that section. Then we basically rendered those two other things in that position. Now, another way to go about this, instead of having this directly in our return, we could just go here and create some sort of variable. And that would be this array of JSX. Then we could just render that array here by simply referring to this array up here. So if I save this, we should be getting the same exact results. So basically, if we can get an array of JSX elements, we can directly render that in our return statement. So now that we know this, let's just go on top here and create another variable. We'll just call this names. And we'll basically just enter a few names. Now let's say I wanted to render those three names here in h2s or something like that. Now, these are just text right now. To be able to render things in our return, 
these have to be JSX returns, which is basically like a React element. So the way we can create that array, I'm just gonna do it here. We can basically take that array and we can map. And as you know, as we map through an array, it creates another array of the same size. We can take each one of those names and we can return something here. So for example, we can return an H2 and we can just say, hello. I didn't have to do return statement here because I just have one line. We could write this in many different ways. Like for example, I could wrap this in brackets, possibly send this to a new line like this, and then return that, which would be exactly the same thing. So if we go back and take a look, now you'll see that we got three hellos. The reason we got three hellos is because in our original names array, we have three elements. We run map method, so that generates another array with three elements with this return that returns hello. But we don't use name in there in any way. Now let's go here and use that name. So we can go within this JSX and use JavaScript in JSX. So we can do parentheses like this and basically just put that name here instead of putting that text. So now if I save this and we go back and take a look, you'll see we got here after this section, we got three H2s. We got Anna, Jane, Olivia. And those render on a page because that's this stuff array and we basically render that in this return down here. Now we could have again done this in a different way. So I could just, since this is a single liner, I could just do this in this case without doing that return brackets. But if you have more complicated code with multiple lines that needs to repeat, you probably want to do those brackets and all that stuff. But right now I just want to show you that this should run exactly the same way and we're gonna get this list. We can now go back and maybe convert this to a list item instead of being an H2. And that should now render three list items. Now usually with list items, you want them to be in some sort of unordered list. So we can create that unordered list here around those list items. And then we can put this here as our list items. We should probably just make this a little simpler by doing something like this instead. So now we should have unordered list. Within that, we're gonna render the stuff which returns a list of list items. So if we go back and take a look, see we got Anna, Jane, Olivia. And here, if I open this, we have unordered list and we have list items within that list that basically has our text. Basically, what I'm trying to show you, if we can, in some way, generate an array that holds JSX in it, then we can basically just return that array and print it on the page. So finally, let me give you that example with multiple lines here. So I'll just push this down. So again, we have to have some sort of return. As usual, when you do a return in your JSX, you have to have one parent basically around the whole thing. So if you don't have a particular parent, you could use this fragment again and then put the stuff within that fragment. Now in this case, I'm gonna stay with that li as my parent. I'll just push it down like this. And then over here, maybe within this list item, maybe I want to convert these to have some sort of i tags wrapped around the name here. And maybe before that i tag, we want to have some sort of span that holds some character like this. So if I save this again, it should work. And see now it returns that span within that list item and then I and we basically return this over and over again. And one other thing that's worth to mention, sometimes you may want to maybe 
send this li to the next line. And if you do this, this is likely to fail. Let's see if it does. It did. I'm not able to render those list items anymore. This is the reason you'll see some parentheses here around this return. So if you do want to send it to a new line like that, you will need to do parentheses like that. And now because of this parentheses, it will know the return is this thing right there. And we should be able to save this and see our results over here. So finally, if this list is supposed to change, so if you're planning to add more elements, remove elements from this list, or make any changes to that list, then you probably don't want to hard code your list like this. Instead, you want to have your list in some sort of state. So as you update the state, it will re-render that list with different elements. So here we could just import state. And then instead of just having this, we can have our const names equals use state. And as our initial state, we can pass this array. And as you know, with state, we get two array elements. The first one will be, again, that state itself. And then the second one will be set state, which is the function. Actually, we'll call this set names, which is the function that allows you to modify the state and re-render the component. So as I do this now, if I save this, we should be able to go back and see that we get the same exact results. Anna, Jane, Olivia, see nothing changed. But because now we have our array within a state, we should be able to now modify that array. And as we modify that array, we should see everything re-renders. So let's just do a quick example of that. Let's just add some button here. When we click on that button, let's add a name to this list. Or maybe we'll just drop the last person from that list or something. So I'll just go back and what I'll do right below this H1, we'll add some sort of div. Within this div, we'll add some sort of button and we'll just say remove last person. For this button to do something, we're gonna assign on click event and that should basically trigger some function, right? So we're gonna say remove last person. Now that function does not exist. So we're gonna create that function here someplace. So again, that's our arrow function syntax. To create a function, you can create that function with the regular function syntax. Let's just quickly add a comment here. I like to have those closings so I know what this is for. So now when we run this function, remove last person, when we click on this button, we basically want to go to this array and remove the last thing in this array. And to do that, we can use pop method. And to make that change, we can use the set names function. So that set names function allows us to retrieve our current list. So we'll just say old list. And then we can return a new list. Now, as you start working with this, you want to remember that if whatever you get is an object, you don't want to directly do something with that object because it's a reference in a memory. So what we'll do with this, we'll just go here and we'll take that old list and we'll make a copy of it. And I'll just call this new list or really anything you want to call it. 
And then we'll take that new list, which will be a copy of that array. And we'll drop the last element using pop. And then we'll return that new list, which now has that last element dropped. And as we return this, it's going to modify our state over here, which is this names variable to have this new array that does not have the last element in it anymore. And then because we're using use state, set names should automatically re-render this whole thing without us doing anything else. So if I just save this and we go back, we have Anna, Jane, Olivia. If I click remove last person, see the last person is gone. If I click on it again, the last person is gone again. If I click on it again, it's gonna remove the last person. So as you can see, this whole thing is empty with ULs. I'm not sure what happens when you hit pop on an empty array. So I guess we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna to go to my console log and click on this again. Didn't give me any errors. So it seems like when you try to pop from an empty array, it just doesn't do anything. So there we go. So you can see how now, as soon as we change the variable, the array, it automatically re-renders this component and we can see those results without having to do anything in our user interface in our return statement here. And it just works out. One last thing I want to show you so you can see how this works is that right now I've created this array over here. And then I take the stuff variable and I return it over here. Now I could, instead of doing that, just go grab this which is basically the creation of this array. Delete this variable from here and then go down here when we render this and simply, let's just create some spacing there, paste that whole thing here. And this would work as well. So if I save this, go back and take a look. Let's make sure we refresh and then we'll talk about this thing in just a second. We're gonna click remove, remove, remove. And as you can see, it works just fine. Now, finally, let's take care of this error that we get, which basically says that if you basically return a list, each item must have a key. The reason React wants those keys is to basically do operations faster. So this will not be a big deal if you have a list of like three items. But if you have a big list, then it's a different type of thing. So what do we do to get rid of that error? All we need to do is to make sure that every element that we return in our JSX array has a unique key associated with the parent. So right now the parent here is li. So to this parent, we need to add some sort of key property and basically this key property has to be something unique. So if I hard code like one, that will loop the same one over and over and over. That's not gonna be unique. So we need to pass something unique here. And one way to do that is to just go here and grab this index from this map function. And that will go like zero, one, two, three, four, five and basically just pass that as a key. That way it will go zero, one, two, three. So it will be a unique key for each one parent here. And parent is li. We don't need to do this for the child elements, just for the parent. And if we do this and save, we go back, we should be able to see how that error disappeared. And if I hit remove, that should remove the last item in this list. So now, hopefully, based on this, we should be able to go to our next video and illustrate how we go about getting some data from some request from a server, get that information and load it on our page using the techniques we already talked about. But for this video, that should do it. Thanks for watching. 
please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.